Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist in New Jersey. Now on today's video, we're going to be talking about my portfolio. Since the last videos on my real estate ventures went pretty well, I figured I would go ahead and talk more about my portfolio and everything I invest in. So we are going to get into how I invest all of my money as a physician. Let's go. Oh my goodness gracious. And before we get into this video, this is a quick disclaimer that this is not financial advice. I'm just some random guy on YouTube talking about my own portfolio. This is not me telling you that you should invest like me or anything of the sort. Do your own research before investing your own money. Again, I'm just some random guy on YouTube. All right, so we are going to break up my investments by category and what category makes up what percentage of my portfolio. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first category that I invest in. And you may have guessed it, it is stocks or securities. So stocks currently make up about 18% of my portfolio. I love investing in stocks. I love trading stocks. I love following the stock market. It's one of the things I do every single day. In fact, the very first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is see what the market's doing, check on any market news from the day prior or overnight, or any global news that's going on that may affect the market on that day. I've always been interested in it. I've always had a passion in it, and I love to invest in stocks. The reason I love investing in stocks is because it's very simple to do and anybody can do it. All you have to do is log on to a computer or even your phone nowadays, sign up with a brokerage, add a little money to your account, and you're good to go. You can start investing in stocks in about five minutes of work and it's pretty easy to do so. Now, obviously, I don't recommend you just go ahead and download an app and start investing in stocks without doing research, but you get the point. So for me, why do I invest in stocks? Well, there are a number of different reasons. For one, they are highly liquid. I do have my money tied up and invested in stocks and securities securities, but I can get that money out at any time. Yes, it may take 24 or 48 hours in some instances, but it's pretty liquid versus something like real estate where I would have to go through the trouble of selling the whole property in order to get my cash. Another great benefit of investing in the stock market is it's easy to diversify. And what I mean by that is there are a ton of different stocks in a ton of different companies, different sectors, energy, fintech, banking, you name it. It's easy to diversify your portfolio only with stocks. The other thing that is a recent occurrence is that the transaction fees are very low, if not zero. Thanks to Robinhood who came out with their $0 trading fees, it really kind of changed the game. I remember back when I first started investing, it was like $9.99 per trade. And you can see how when I would invest like $100 at that time, $9.99 was 10% of my portfolio. So anytime you bought or sold stock, it was pretty pricey. Some of the cons investing in stocks are that it's pretty volatile. The market moves all the time throughout the day and responds differently to different things that are happening in the world. The market reacts on emotions a lot of time and it may be stressful for certain people. I personally don't mind because I take the long-term investing approach and just kind of set it and forget it. Another con to investing in stocks is that when you sell it, it could trigger capital gains tax and capital gains taxes are pretty hefty, especially for short-term capital gains. Obviously you get taxed less for long-term holding over a year plus plus, but the taxes are still there. The other con associated with investing in stocks is that sometimes you can be emotionally driven and invest on emotions alone. It's really easy to get caught up in what's going on, what stock is moving up and trying to get in because you have FOMO and you want a part of the action. The most recent occurrence was with GameStop where a ton of people made a lot of money and there were also a lot of people who lost a lot of money. It's easy to invest on emotion and you should not. So if you have trouble thinking and researching your investments, this may not be a good option for you. So since we're talking about my portfolio and what I invest in, let's go ahead and get into the stocks that I invest in. I tend to invest mostly in ETFs because they are generally less risky than the average stock. Now, that is a very general statement, so don't hold me to it. So what is an ETF for those who don't know? ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. They are essentially a basket of securities that trades just like a stock. They can track an index, a commodity, a sector, or even another asset. The most well-known examples of these ETFs are those that track the indices, like the SPY or VOO ETFs that track the S&P 500. Again, the reason I like to invest in these is because you can kind of set them and forget them. They're generally less risky and have a pretty good return on your investment. They also offer better risk management via diversification. The ETFs I invest in are VOO, VTI, QQQ, ARCK, and ARCX. Now those last two, ARCK and ARCX, haven't done too well, but again, these are very long-term holds 
five to 10 years plus. So I'm not too worried about it. If you checked it daily, you may be alarmed, especially now when I'm down about 20% on the RK fund, but nonetheless, you just gotta let it ride. Now I mentioned most of my stock portfolio is made up of ETFs, but I do invest in other things like dividend stocks such as O Realty and a number of different stocks just for the heck of it, ranging from Facebook to Coinbase and everything in between. In terms of my stock portfolio, 70% consists of ETFs, 20% consists of just random stocks, and about 10% consists of dividend stocks. For those of you who don't know, a dividend is basically a distribution of the company's profits to its shareholders. They usually give you a small percentage of each share you own, and it happens periodically throughout the year, sometimes monthly, sometimes quarterly, depends on the stock. I'm not going to get too much into it because I wanted to focus more on my portfolio today. So now that we know that stocks make up about 18% of my portfolio, let's go into something that makes up a majority of my investment portfolio portfolio and that is real estate. Real estate makes up about 57% of my total investment portfolio and there are a number of reasons why I love real estate and this is why. So as you know many investors turn to the stock market because it's pretty easy to handle. You just open a brokerage account like I mentioned and start investing in stocks and real estate takes a little bit more time and a lot of energy sometimes and not to mention money. Some people never even venture into real estate investing because it's too much of a headache and while that may be true for some people I think it's a pretty good idea for those of you who are interested. Now, obviously it's up to you to decide if you wanna take the leap of faith and it depends on your risk tolerance and goals and all that stuff because everybody's different and at a different place in life. When you buy stocks, you can make money when the stock goes up or they pay you dividends. But what's different about real estate is when you buy it, you acquire something physical, something tangible, property or land. You can make money in a ton of different ways by owning real estate. Just to mention a few, you can collect rent every month if you have a tenant. You can make money on appreciation. You can also leverage the tangible real estate asset to make other investments. And besides all that, real estate has many good tax advantages, especially for some of the high income earners. You can write off depreciation every year. You can write off maintenance on the home. And there's a whole bunch of different tax write-offs you can do among many other tax advantages. So does real estate provide a better return than stocks? It's hard to really tell because there are so many factors that go into that loaded question. It depends on where the property is, how much you bought it for, what's your return on investment, the appreciation of the property, how much you put down on the property, how much repairs you do. There are so many factors that go into calculating your return and that's why it can be a little complicated to compare to stocks. I love it because it's a great way to cash flow and all the other things I mentioned earlier and also it's a great way to diversify your portfolio. So to summarize, the pros of owning real estate are passive income, tax advantages, a hedge against inflation, inability to leverage, and the cons of owning real estate. A lot of times it's more work than just buying a stock. It's expensive and illiquid, which means you can't just go out and sell it and have cash immediately. The transaction costs are high. You have to make at least a down payment. There are closing costs and all that stuff associated with buying real estate. And appreciation isn't guaranteed, i.e. 2008. It most certainly is not without its own set of risks, but it's an investment after all. Here's a little preview to 2022. I love real estate so much. I am currently under contract with a few more properties and I may bump my current holdings from 57% to 70% of my total investment portfolio, but stay tuned because being under contract doesn't mean you actually acquire the house. There are a lot of things that can happen in that time. Moving on to the next category of my portfolio that makes up approximately 4%, much smaller than the last two categories, that is cryptocurrency. Now crypto has been a hot time topic in the 2021 news. I feel like Bitcoin has been in like every financial headline in the past year. And who better to jump on the bandwagon than yours truly? <laughs> now, I've done pretty extensive research into a lot of different cryptocurrencies, and I've decided to kind of focus my attention on only three of them. The reason is it's easy to kind of get caught up in the Shibu Inus and the Dogecoin and all that stuff, but truly looking at fundamentals and what I think could have a chance of actually gaining value going forward, I had to focus on just three and I'm still a little skeptical slash hesitant to invest too much of my portfolio into cryptocurrency because of mostly how volatile it is. It can drop 30% at the drop of the hat and that's kind of terrifying sometimes, but just don't look at it. 
<laughs> so I currently invest in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Bitcoin makes up approximately 72% of my portfolio. Ethereum makes up approximately 20% of my crypto portfolio. And Solana makes up approximately 8% of my crypto portfolio. There's not much more I have to say about that. I don't want there to be a crypto battle in the comments or any of the crypto bots commenting away like they usually do. But 4% is my current risk allowance right now. And I may be kind of working it up to 10%, especially on the current dip. I like to buy the dips and there is a pretty big sale going on in crypto. The next category of my investment portfolio consists of none other than art. <laughs> which may seem crazy, but again, I'm all about diversification. So I found out about investing in art via the new platform Masterworks, not sponsored, but they basically purchase art and split it up into shares of the artwork. So if you have a Banksy painting for like $2 million, you can own a certain amount of shares of it for at least $1,000 a share. So has a pretty good return on investment, 12 to 17% on a lot of them, sometimes 30% plus. So I figured I'd invest, you know, a few dollars here and there and uh, see what happens. Art currently consists of 1% of my portfolio. This is a very new thing for me. I'm just kind of trying it out and see what happens. The thing I do like about it is that it's a good way to diversify my portfolio. But again, your money is pretty illiquid. It stays in that art until Masterworks decides to sell it. Although there is a secondary market where I can sell those shares of the artwork that I own, but I haven't really tried it yet. So I'm just going to wait until they feel it's appropriate to sell the piece of art and uh, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. It'll probably be like three to five years from now. And the reason it's only 1% of my portfolio is because of the illiquid nature of this investment. Now, if you've been doing math so far, you know that that's about 80% of my investment portfolio. And that's because the rest of my portfolio consists of cash. So Right now, I currently have about 20% cash on hand. And the reason I'm so liquid in cash right now is because if you remember, I'm currently under contract with a few more investment properties and I'm going to need some cash to buy them. If everything works out smoothly and I purchase them, my real estate portfolio will go from 57% to 70% and my cash will go from 20% to 6%. And the six to 10% range is fine with me. My goal is to really have all of my money working for me. Now, when I say that, I do kind of leave out the fact that I have a six month emergency fund in case everything hits the fan, but keeping your money in a savings account is doing pretty much nothing for you, especially given the current economic inflation. So that is officially my entire investment portfolio. I'm curious to see what kind of investments, what kind of stocks you invest in, all that other stuff, what kind of cryptos. Do you invest in real estate? Do you like real estate? Do you want to invest in real estate? Let me know in the comments below all of this stuff. If you want me to make more videos like this, also let me know in the comments as well. I love making videos like this. It's a good way to tie in medicine and investment strategies and all that kind of stuff. Again, this is not financial advice. Gently press that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.